Episode three. I think Drinky Bird should be the character in the opening title. Okay. Let's make that happen. That's just, just a thought. Hey everybody, I'm Jack Forster, Editor-in-Chief at Hodinkee, and I'm going to be answering questions from you, our readers, about watches. Hey, me answering questions about watches. Wow, you gotta see this everyone, must be a day that ends in Y. Hey Hodinkee, why do people get so mad about date windows? Why do people get so mad about date windows? I don't know. Why do fools fall in love? Who put the bop in the bop op shabop? Who's the man behind the curtain? I mean, uh, people get mad. People get mad about absolutely anything and everything. One of the things that drives anger is a desire to distinguish ourselves from some other who we feel threatened by or who we want to separate ourselves from. And in getting angry at date windows, we get angry at something that's number one, easy to identify. Number two, that is very binary. Hey, the date window's either there or it's not. And is also something very, very polarizing. Now, the truth is brands keep putting date windows on watches not to irritate a small group of enthusiasts, but because more people buy watches when they have date windows on them because people like looking at the date. Uh, I'm getting a little bit older and it's harder for me to remember the date than it used to be. So I'm perfectly happy to have a watch with a date window on it. But I think uh, the reason that people hate date windows is partly because of the natural human tendency to focus on minor differences and turn them into major points of contention, which let's face it, as part of the fun of being an enthusiast. But it's also because uh, it gives us something to uh, disagree over on a regular basis, time and time again, without ever actually having to go back and re-examine our assumptions about why we dislike what we say we dislike. Hey, Hodinky. I know how to pick a good watch. How do I pick a good hourglass? Do they vary much in terms of features or accuracy, or are they all about aesthetics? There are probably things that you can do to help ensure that an hourglass is more accurate uh, than less. One of the things that you can do is you can choose particles that, will, that are actually small enough uh, to flow evenly uh, through the aperture between the upper and the lower part of the glass. But you know, hourglasses are an inherently analog and not terribly, terribly precise way of telling time. They're really, really useful as a way of kind of visually keeping track of how much elapsed time more or less has gone by. I have an hourglass on my desk, for instance, and it's actually pretty accurate. But yeah, I think hourglasses are great for aesthetics. They're great for visual appeal. They're not a particularly accurate way of telling time, and they never really were, which is how we ended up with clocks and watches in the first place. But they are also a really wonderful visual reminder of the connection between the passage of time and the inevitable reality of death. Hey, Hodinky, I love how light titanium is. Can you recommend a few cool titanium watches? Titanium is actually an extremely cool material. It is almost ideal for watch cases, uh, but not in its natural state. In its natural state, it is stronger than steel. It has greater tensile strength than steel. It's about a third the weight. It's hypoallergenic. That's why you find it used in places where high strength and low weight, low mass is very, very important, like uh, the aerospace industry. It also tends to pick up scratches easily. So if you're going to use titanium for a watch case, your best bet is to uh, find a watch that uses some titanium alloy or some surface treatment, which resists scratches extremely well. Uh, one of the best examples that I can think of uh, are the various titanium alloys that are actually used by Seiko in both the regular Seiko and Grand Seiko models. Seiko is actually a pioneer in the use of titanium in watches. They created one of the first titanium watch cases for their professional divers watches back in the 1970s. And uh, they have been steadily and incrementally improving the quality of the alloys that they use over the last few decades until what you've got is something that's actually still stronger than steel, still lighter than steel, but actually more scratch resistant than the standard 316L stainless steels that are used in most common watch cases. Another really interesting option to look at is IWC. Their serotanium watch cases are treated in such a way that the outer surface of the titanium case actually becomes ceramized. It becomes an extremely hard industrial grade ceramic that resists scratches extremely well. There are other options out there, of course, but if you want to look at two companies that are doing really, really interesting things with titanium alloys, uh, Seiko, Grand Seiko, and uh, IWC are great places to start. Well, everybody, that's another episode of Hey Ho Dinky. 
And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have questions, and I know you do, send them to hey at hodinky.com. That's hey at hodinky.com, H-E-Y, not H-A-Y. We're not selling farm equipment. Take care.